Good morning, folks. We have a lot more links and stories than usual today. We'll hit everything from astrophysics to weather modification, but we have to start with the last 24 hours on our star where solar flaring continues, especially at the large southern active region. It's almost impressive how many flares can come from one sunspot group without releasing a CME, but that's what we're watching unfold here. I'll keep monitoring the active region today and the Earth's magnetic field as those weak CMEs began impacting overnight. Let's get right to the science news, however, and we start with the electric currents being responsible for the significant heating of the chromospheric moss. It's not actually a plant on the sun, it just looks like it, and it turns out it's yet another electrodynamic feature on our star. Up next, we go to climate, where we've seen many times why a warming Arctic can create major cold events for Europe. Here, they describe why it will trigger them in the United States and Russia. It's actually happened many times already, and it's going to get worse as the ocean currents slow down as well. More surprises in paleomagnetism here. The Cretaceous normal supercron was thought to be relatively stable. But no, a deeper dive into the paleo intensity stacks reveals significant variability both in terms of weak points and in the strongest variation during strong field periods, like an ancient version of the Levantine Iron Age anomaly. Fresh off the story about solar forcing of precipitation in the Caribbean a few days ago, we've got a similar study showing the same for Central America. We have now seen everywhere in the world claim evidence of solar forcing of precipitation patterns and every climatologist put their fingers in their ears and pretend it doesn't exist. We're going to come back to that. But first, an interesting study trying to nail down how much material needs to be dumped on a star to make it go nova. It's their first try, but I'll still take a whack at breaking it down here. Basically, scaled to the size of the sun, they say it would take about 5,000 Earths worth of material, which doesn't really make sense, and I think it's likely that they've overestimated that number. Imagine needing 5,000 Earths of material to make a star this size go boom. More likely to be just a fraction of that but I promised we'd get back to precipitation. Awesome tweet by our friend Brian here last night. It's linked for you below. And while most of you know I detest weather modification and think it's all a bad idea, at least this one is good for something, just not helping the weather. They are juicing up the clouds to make rain stick together electrically and make that rain more likely to fall. What's funny is this is how solar and cosmic ray forcing does it by atmospheric electrification and direct impact on droplet nucleation and clumping. This method, thought up by climate zealots, turns out to utterly prove the science they say isn't real and helps debunk the need for it and the merit of much of the climate discussion. Welcome to Clown World once again. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.